And I'll be very quick because I'm excited to hear our next speaker. Verse number five says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why are you cast down this morning? The Lord asks, then look at verse 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of thy countenance and my God. And there's a little formula right there. If you see it, it says, uh, uh, hope thou in God. That's the only hope we got. He says, and then you'll praise. We have to make ourselves praise the Lord, but we're commanded to praise the Lord. All of us are commanded to praise the Lord. And uh, you have the responsibility to praise the Lord. So you've got to do things and read things and pray and do things that encourage you to praise the Lord. One of the best things you can do, and I've told people for years, one of the best things you can do your daily devotion is to uh, have a hymn book with you. And uh, reading the hymns, I, I never have to worry about getting a song book to, for a hymn because I've read those things and read those things and lived in them and lived in them. And, I, and I, I, I just enjoy, I enjoy my singing all day long. Not many other people do, but I do. So I'm just going to sing on because it helps me. It helps me. I got to help me or I can't help anybody. I don't want everybody to say, I don't know where he comes. I don't want to old grouch around, you know. I said, no, uh, uh, I am an old grouch sometimes, I'm sure. But, uh, again, it's Heather's fault when I am. But uh, I, I want to talk to you about overcoming some discouragement this morning. Father, bless our time together. Help me not to ramble, Lord. Help me to be, have the physical strength to do what I need to do this morning. And I pray you may give me clarity of mind and thought. And, Father, may we all be encouraged today. May we be glad we were here. Lord, how could we not be encouraged seeing what we just saw? How could we not be encouraged by hearing the opportunity? Oh, we're so glad you're not dead, God. We're so glad that you're still in the same business you've always been in. Restoring and redeeming. Oh, this morning, restore our souls. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you will miss a lot of blessings in life by not having any castaways in your church. It's, it's the greatest thing in the world is restore somebody. But you can't restore anybody or help anybody if you're down on the bottom. Discouragement is a sin. Did you hear me? Discouragement is a sin. If you say this morning, I'm just a little bit discouraged, that's just saying like you're a little bit drunk. Discouragement is a sin, just like you being drunk is a sin. And we're commanded, and the Bible says much about not being discouraged. You can't do a work for God if you're discouraged. You can't, it's, people come into some churches, you know, you, I'd hate to be the preacher, get something to pull Well, folks, I'm glad to see you today. I didn't know if I'd make it today. It's been a hard week. You don't believe the week I've had. You don't believe how bad it is, and I don't know if I can make it, folks, and we may have, we have to pack up and leave or something, you know. And, uh, uh, boy, that really makes for an exciting church, exciting place to be. I, you know, uh, we, we need to come to our pulpit and encourage every time you come. I never gave my people a discouraged preacher. And I'm, I, I'm not going to be a discouraged person. I'm not going to give it to you. No, you should encourage yourself. And he said, we're to overcome discouragement. Discouragement is sin. That's the first thing you've got to realize. Discouragement is not only sin. Discouragement is selfishness. You're discouraged. It's all about you. It's all about your problems. Uh, that, that, that attitude has no place in the ministry. It is, it is, a, it is a sin to be discouraged. Now, we give a few little points here, little things, and We'll, we'll be done and get out of the way, but it's, this will help you if you'll listen to me. First thing I want to say is when you get discouraged, and you will, all of us fight discouragement. So don't add line to it by saying you don't ever get discouraged. We all have to keep ourselves right. First thing is don't give in to it. You get discouraged, don't give in to it. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. 
So you, there must be discipline and self-control not to give in. I, you say, I'm not going to go to the bar. I'm not going to be around people drinking and stuff like that. And you shouldn't. But you make up your mind, I'm not going to give in to those people. I'm not going to give in to any temptation like that. But we omit this, what I'm talking about this morning. There must be that discipline that we have not to give in. We must fight. I automatically suspicion anybody who talks, oh, I don't want to fight. I don't like fight. There's too much fighting going on. There was not enough fighting going on. You need to fight yourself. You need to look at yourself in the mirror every day and say, I ain't used to you, son. You're not going to control me today. You're not going to tell me today. You're not going to make me mad today. You're not going to do. And you need to uh, get, you, get yourself in order and uh, say, I'm not going to be discouraged. There's got to be a discipline. You've got to fight every day to be the right kind of person because we all are prone not to be. Yeah, all of you have a temper. All, I mean, we all, all the frailties of humanity we all have. So we have to either give in to it or we have to fight it. And so the first place to fight is to fight your attitude, fight your, get yourself right. And then number two, we must expect our power when it comes to this discouragement, determination, and faith bring God's power and helps us win. If we're going to get power, expect our power, it comes to us when we overcome discouragement. You can't have the power of God if you're discouraged. This is a big deal. We talk about wanting our churches to be better. Well, uh, a congregation that's discouraged, they don't sing very well. Uh, discouraged ushers don't make you feel real welcome when you come in. Choir looks discouraged and frowning. Uh, that doesn't help anybody. So I uh, guess yeah, why I think I'll get out of the choir. No, put a smile on your face and stay. What you need to do, take control of yourself. Don't let yourself boss you around. And get yourself right. You must fight it. And through the determination and faith, you can bring God's power into your life. And it helps you win the battle you fight. The Bible says in James 1.12, Blessed is the man who endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Now, blessed is a man that endureth temptation. That word endureth, you know what it means? Sure you do. It means you outlast it. Yeah, well, I'm being tempted, preacher. I'm being, well, outlast it. Outlast it. You keep going. You keep fighting. You outlast it. You keep outlast. You outlast it, uh, man. Uh, I, I, I know. I know. There's a there's an undertaker chasing me, and I'm running as fast as I can. I don't want. To, I don't over be overtaken. And you have to. You have to make up your mind that you're going not going to be overtaken by that bitter spirit. You see, discouragement is the first building block to bitterness. Anybody who's been discouraged, don't you dare tell me that you're not dealing with a little bitterness too. Because that discouragement puts you into a mindset of, of a perceived wrong, a perceived action that was unfair to you, that has caused you to feel the way that you feel. And what you need to do is get over yourself. And uh, realize that I have a responsibility not to be discouraged. And I can't be a stumbling block to others. Number two, don't give out with it. Don't give into it. Don't give out with it. You don't have to tell people how you feel. You don't have to announce that you're in a bad mood. You're, you, and you've all met people. I just want you all to know that I'm in a bad mood. Well, man, you shouldn't tell nobody like me that because then I'm going to just boom, 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 boom. I'm going to see how high we can get that temperature. <laughs> so, wait, I'm not going to let you put me in the corner. And, but we can't give in to it. We can't give out with it. Don't tell your friends when you're discouraged. No, Psalm 105, 2 says, sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. 
Talk ye of all his wondrous works. When you feel discouraged, don't give out with that. Why don't you start talking about how good God is? Boy, what God has done for us. Didn't this do something for you this morning to hear this? All this stuff? And it's all because of something started bad. And God wants to make it good. And God will make it good if we allow it to be good. Romans 8, 28 really works if we let it work. And uh, uh, we just have to let God be God and trust him. Start praising God for his goodness. You're not going to hell. you got, you got plenty to praise God for. I mean, if you're not going to hell, you really don't have much to worry about. We're all going to heaven. We're going to spend eternity with our Lord. Don't give out with it. If you want to give out something, give out the gospel. Give out the praise to the Lord, how good God is. How good is God? And uh, we ought to be telling people that don't give out with it. Don't be negative and pessimistic with your words and your thoughts because it makes you discouraged. But it discourages your, uh, your people you love. Kids are discouraged by their parents. Talking about parents, talking about, I don't know how we're going to pay the electric bill. I don't know how we're going to do this. We don't know how to, how to do that. Well, well, why don't you just start praising the Lord, teaching your kids that God supplies all your needs. And it's already been said that I, I heard my son here this morning admin, giving you admonition about tithing. Uh, you let God pay your bills. If you tithe and do right. But don't, don't pass on to somebody, your children especially, negative things, pessimistic things. I used to get so when I was growing up, I'd hear people say, well, you probably won't get to grow up. You, you know, we're going to, the country's going to be gone. America's going to be gone. Well, America's still here. And America may be gone tomorrow. But if it is, God still be, will still be around and we'll be okay. But to pass on an optimistic spirit, we can do it. We can do it. Boy, it, you know, you come in, isn't church great today? Isn't it great to be in the house of God? And you start talking, you know, people start believing you. But you got to believe it yourself Amen. if you're going to get people to believe it. So don't give out with it. Don't tell your brother how discouraged you are, how bad it is. Some people just talk to each other so they can tell each other how bad it is. And then both of you hang up bitter. Yeah, all these other preachers. If I, had a, if I could get somebody to help me get a ranch, man, I'd be great. But I can't. Yeah, God doesn't give much to grouches. God doesn't help many people who are just, just full of themselves. And we all have that tendency, folks. Bitterness is the number one destroyer of churches and people's lives who are faithful Christians. And it all starts with discouragement. A perceived something that didn't go your way that you feel like should have went your way. Or you don't understand why somebody else... It seems to be doing okay with the situation, and you're not. Don't give out with it. Give out with praise. It's an evil thing to discourage others. It's not sin. It's evil. If you discourage someone, Jesus said, if you offend one of these little ones, it's better than a millstone that hangs around your neck. It's cast into the sea. Don't be a discouragement. Be an encourager to somebody. Uh, I find somebody every day to try to encourage. Do you know I like to make people smile? You know, I, I, that's, that's one of my goals. I go places. I, I, I've traded in the same places for years and decades. And people stop work when I come in to laugh with me because I make them laugh. I, I make them laugh. I, I will make you laugh, I promise you. You're going to laugh or cry one. We're going to get a reaction. But, you know, there's something about laughing and smiling that does you good. And it does good. And we need to practice that. Don't give out with it. Give out with the good news. Be positive. Paul's in jail. Paul, how you doing? Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Well, Paul, how's the food? Rejoice in the Lord again. And I say rejoice. What do you think you're going to get out, Paul? Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Rejoice means rejoy, 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 rejoy. Hey, you can just do that with your salvation all day. Rejoy, 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 rejoy. 
You can just do that all day. Think about when your children got saved. Rejoy, 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 rejoy. Oh, this world is hurting and dying, and we have the solution. And one of the solutions is to overcome that discouragement, quit being discouraged. Number three, don't get down from it. That's the problem right there. Psalm 3, 3, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. It's just a lifter up of your head. You're not supposed to walk around like this. You're supposed to walk around like this, looking up. Put your shoulders back. Straight ahead. And uh, uh, you can look up higher. John looked up higher until that door, the window opened. And uh, we ought to look up higher, too, occasionally. But we should lift ourselves, lift your countenance. He's the lifter up of your head on the hospital bed. He's the lifter up of your head uh, when you feel like you can't, the whole world's against you. When you feel like there's no hope, there's one who will lift your head. But you've got to start thinking about him and praising him for him to do it. Don't get down from it. When we fail to pray and believe God's word, we're easy prey for discouragement. We must have faith in God. We must ask him to lift up our heads. And we must believe that he is able to keep us from falling. He said he can keep our head from going down. I've had the privilege of knowing a lot of great men. And I don't know why I had the privilege of getting it on, but I, ne I never met one of them who was discouraged. I never met one of them who say, Oh, let's pray, pray about, I, I, I feel like my man, I may be quitting. I want to quit. Never heard that from a great man. Never heard it from a great Christian. If, you, if you're talking like that and thinking like this, because you're discouraged. And you're getting despondent and you're getting bitter. You are bitter if the secret is to let somebody break you down good. Don't give up through it. Number four. Matthew 10, 22. He that endure to the end shall be saved. Don't give up through it. Endure to the end. I'm not going to let you put me down. I'm not going to let this spirit I feel trying to overwhelm me. I know, I know how to get rid of it. I start singing. I start praising God. I say, uh, uh, people can think I'm crazy if you want to, but I go around all the time uh, either praying or singing. You, you, can walk, you can walk around a city block and pray. And uh, we ought to do that. We ought to learn to praise the Lord. Self-centeredness makes people easy prey to Satan. A lack of love for God and others causes others to give up when discouraged. I don't want to be the reason somebody gives up. I don't want to give up on people. That's the one thing. That's, that's in my son. That's in this church. We don't, we don't give up on people. And we shouldn't give up on people. But we can't help people if we're discouraged and we're down. We've got to be filled with God's love. Then we reach out to others and help them. That's what we're supposed to do. We can win the loss if we reach out to them. Not a discouraged thing. Uh, you, you're not going to go to somebody's house and say, I got to tell you, the worst thing that ever happened to me was when I got saved. The most discouraging thing was when I got saved. Boy, I thought I had trouble that I got saved. You ever heard that one? Yeah, you have. I've heard it. We say such dumb things. And one of the reasons we do is we allow ourselves to get despondent and get discouraged. Every day, find something to praise the Lord about. Now, this morning, that's what I brought you this morning. One step at a time. Learn to praise God. Learn to not be discouraged. Somebody asks you, are you discouraged? No, don't you say yes. Don't you say, if you have to say, I'll be right back. And go find you a room somewhere and just uh, start shouting and praising God for what he's done for you. And he can say, then come back. That's what you got to do. It's what we're responsible to do. And others are hurting, and, and we are hurting with our own self-infliction. 
because you're bitter now. Get over it. Get over it. Whatever this morning you feel just out of sorts about, and you can't wait to tell somebody, be quiet and get over it. it. It's not all about you. Get over it. Get over it. Get over it. Praise the Lord. Help somebody. You find somebody you can help this morning. And I'm glad that God has let me live my life helping other people and praising him. And uh, I think I made it. Everybody's wondering what makes this morning. I did pretty good for a drunk man this morning. But uh, I, uh, I rejoice and praise God that he can use us if we keep our spirit right. He can't use you with a bad spirit. He can't use you being bitter about something. So you said something years ago you hadn't dealt with, you need to deal with it. That don't mean you have to go drag a bunch of people into it. You deal with you. You deal with you and it'll be a better life for you and a better world for the rest of us.